one thing about the Boesia is like they're very, very benevolent people. So that's one thing that I know. They're right. very benevolent. Mm-hmm. No, not in a bad way. They're right. here. They're here. They're, most people get the uh, yeah. get the word benevolent. Benevolent. Um, yeah. They make it know. seem bad, like right. they're evil or deceitful or, or something negative. Like that, or negative. They're, that just means they're. They're, they're, they're here to help you, but they're very also very inquisitive in the way that they help you. Right. So, you know, when they help, that's why when you summon them, they might appear to you in, like a well, in a well-dressed manner, you know, they might appear well-dressed, well-fashioned, you know, because some, some when I invoke some voice, they appear to me, like their images appear to me with, with almost human-like beings with jewels all over their right, right. bodies. Like they, they look like almost like, like a shadowy, misty beings with beings with jewels all over their bodies. Like mm-hmm. almost like they're channeling all these high hurts through their gems as well. Like they know about gems and everything. That's why they try to teach us. That's why they say Azazo gave us the gift of minerals, of using minerals and crystals and stuff like that. Because he tried to teach us the techniques of the heavens. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're here to do. They're here to teach us, as human beings, teach us godly techniques right. from the heavens. And that's why people get mad and think it's sinful to, for black magicians to have power with working with these Galatia. Because when you achieve this power and you start manifesting everything physically, and you start manifesting physical power, you know, to a point where even people that don't believe start seeing it and tripping out. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it almost comes to a point where they can't deny it anymore. Almost. The Galatia to me is a force that's undeniable, the force of the void itself. Right. It's here and it's always been here. It's been here before the stars even came to creation. Right. You gotta always remember that before creation there was nothing. And that nothingness, that's what that's what they are. They were there to spark in creation. And that's why I, I work with them because I do believe that they also they are also the chaotic forms of the Hindu and Sumerian gods as well. That's why I work a lot with, and the same as well with the Egyptians as well, because they all connect very similarly when I work with their energies. Mm-hmm. Um, the Goetia go way, 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 way back. Way back. Like, they're not, like, void. I, I would say they're beings of the void, but they're also angels as well. They're also angelic, in a way. They're not all evil. They're not, yeah, they could, maybe they could be demons, but aren't we all, we all have that, you know, that chaotic nature. Right. Every being has that chaotic nature that they need in order for self-defense, well, in order well, to reaffirm power. Right, 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 right. So it all goes back to what is the definition of a demon? Okay, what a demon is. Right. A demon is not, a demon is a chaotic force that, exists, that assists only in creation, only for means of creation. Only means of creation. Um, also, not only creation, but also destruction, destruction as well. Destruction, of course. Destruction is, destruction is needed is what I'm Destruction is in everything, though. That's, everything. That's, that's right. That destruction is in the very being of light exactly. itself. If, that's why I always tell you that, and I said that one time, that there is, there, is, there is light and darkness, and there is darkness and light. Right. You know, there is always, there's, they're in each other. They intertwine. That's why you ever seen the yin and yang, where they intertwine. That has a very deep meaning to it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And it's more than just, ooh, balance of energies, like most people you know, would think uh, on the spot. Light and darkness, it has a very strong geometrical meaning to it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it, it, it all goes back to, to, the God, to beings giving us, you know, techniques to be able to look into things that could give us power, to kind of lighten our mood, that could make us feel better, live better lifestyles. Right. It all goes back to that. So, I mean... People, uh, people that deny that, that means you're just denying history of what really occurred, you know, because there's people that shot each other with bullets in our time, and they talk about it in their history books, but back then, there was guns. Oh, yes, they did, they did talk about it in their history books. And, you know, and, but back, but back then, you know, in those times, in the celestial era, people talked about gods, and spirits, and, and beings, fairies, all this trippy stuff walking around, you know. Right. And... That's because at that time there was no, there were, the frequency was so high in the atmosphere that, that there was, it wasn't bound and to, we, to, and we, to and we, normal we, circumstances like how we view this earth. Right. And when we talk about 
such a high frequency in that time we are talking about more than just uh you know a metaphysical version of uh, frequency we're talking about a physical version of frequency where there's the oxygen level was higher the, Animals the were healthier. yes People uh were more stronger. minerals in the water uh minerals. more you know you know the there was less salt in the water you know exactly. um and such you know more the ocean water was fresh fresher than anything uh, most of most of the ocean water the reason why it tastes salty and shit is because of our shit yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly it's fucking disgusting but like the thing is like a lot of people think like i, I didn't tell you but my, my my mother my mother i think my my my, my, uh, my Asian grandmother that converted to catholic right she worked to archangel michael uh i didn't know that once she has, she has a tumor in her ear, she can't, she can't hear anything. But she has, she has hearing aids now, so that she can hear now. Right. She works with Archangel Michael, that's why I still, you know, fly with her from time to time. She is, my grandma is kind of a little bit, a tad bit close-minded, but she still has more of her, you know. She's still getting there. Um, Good there, right, right, right. Everyone's all their spiritual learning. Everyone's all their spiritual Everywhere. development, you know. But some people are too bound to their own spiritual development so much. To the point where they down each other, they down other people for having their own spiritual development, yeah. and that's and that's and that's where everything in religion becomes wrong. When people down each other because of how they worship God or how they want right. to receive God. Right. I, I told I told you like I remember a long time ago when I used to when I used to talk when I was a kid I used to talk about how like if I was a god I would create like this whole fucking race of like spiritual moon energy elves mm -hmm. that survive off of just moon. Right. And like the, everything, the moon fish, everything. Like I just had a whole moon theme for like my whole universe and stuff like that. Sounds lit. <laughs> yeah, it sounds lit as fuck. Like they, in my idea for them was they were gonna look like you know the avatars as blue people, but they were gonna look, they were just gonna look pale white, and their eyes were gonna be like opal crystals, basically. Oh shit, that sounds like so dope. Like exactly. we could turn that into a movie type shit. Exactly. Oh, yeah, right. Hey y'all boys, y'all animators, our fans. You know, if y'all could turn that into an anime or some shit. I'll be lit. <laughs> uh, it's like most most things, and, and one thing is working with Odin. Oh, one, that's, oh, that's one thing. Odin connects to the Goetia as well. Uh, here's why. The reason why I say that is because when working with working with the Goetia, uh, I also started connecting with Nordic gods as well, like Freya. Right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but Odin, yes for a fact connects to the Goetia because of ruins connecting to demon magic. Right. And also, what else is connected to ruins? Odin uh, the, the and Nordic is, magic. Yeah, Nordic magic is also connected to, um, to Goetia because it also speaks in terms of what you do with them. You know, right. what, you, what, what you do with the ruins. You could, you could channel them, you could use the ruins to channel the goddess, uh, let's say for instance, the goddess Hell, you know, where she's the goddess of the underworld, and she's also correlated to Lilith and Hecate as well. Right. You connect with the Boeotia through that. You know right. what I mean? And it all well, let's speak about Hecate thing. as well. Hecate connected to the Boeotia oh, and I'm, being a cliffhopic queen. Right. Oh, spiritually, I'm a siren. I've been working right. up here for a very long time, um, especially Lilith and stuff. Uh, one thing is, like, I, I kind of, I kind of like. I really liked working with her for, for for a long time because working with her it was I was really able to work with any mermaid spirit I want without having a bad experience. Right. After invoking Hecate and she's the goddess of all mermaids, I was able to literally work with all types of um, water spirits, like mm -hmm. no matter what. Right. I was always able to work with them. I never had trouble with water spirits. Even even in the mythos, I worked with Necronomicon water spirits. I've never had I've never had trouble. After I invoked Hecate, I've never had any trouble invoking. Yeah, but that's um, but one also, and also one thing about uh, about uh, Abaddon. Do you need a chair? No, oh, yeah. Recently, I also tried to, at some point, you know, 
I even thought of, um, you know, doing some crazy things. Like, I almost sacrificed my eye to a certain baby. Right. I was right. gonna sacrifice um, my eye to. I, re- I remember. I remember that time um, when we uh, we both were actually uh, considering sacrificing our eyes. Right. I, I was gonna sacrifice my my eye to Abaddon so I could from that eye I could view all the terrors of the underworld. Right. Uh, I was gonna replace my eye, obviously. I had plans with it. I was right. gonna replace my eyes with a with a amethyst eye. Right. Uh, because there are crystal crystal, crystal eyes. eyes that you can get. People have right. ebony eyes, like all types of stuff that you can replace here, and it looks like a real eye, but it's actually a crystal. Right. Uh, I I usually I wanted to I wanted to do that. I was gonna probably do I was probably gonna replace one of my eyes with an amethyst an amethyst eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my, one of my eyes would probably be purple, the purple is glowing or whatever. And I'd be able to channel that knowledge energy, that cosmic energy knowledge. Right. But obviously not in the way or in the in the right hand pathway. No. Um, getting more into um, right hand magic or left hand magic. Right. What's the difference between the two and the way should magic? Well, the difference between right hand path magic and left hand path magic. Well, it's, it's basically the goal at the end. You know, like the goal for the right hand is to achieve sort of this oneness with the self, and oneness with God, and right. oneness with the universe. The left hand path is more of trying to focus on transcending the will of the universe itself, becoming outside of it, Mm -hmm. transcending God, if you want, in basic terms. You can take a break if you want. Yeah, that shit. (laughs) (laughs) Right. 